Thank you, thank you. Now I will do my six minutes in three minutes. Can we talk? <laughs> right. I am asking us how do we respond to drug apartheid? Um, those of us who lived, who were born and lived through apartheid, know that apartheid is not racism. It is not a state of mind. It is a whole system that's got things that it's built on from the church to the sociology, but it's also a system that's maintained through structures. So I want to put forward that we actually live in drug apartheid. The drug user is identified through the legal system, through social systems, is isolated. She would leave home, be found in jail, rehab center, in streets. When we serve them, we do them at special clinics and vertical programs. You remember the, de the Department of Bantu Affairs? that looked at the welfare of African people, the Department of Bantu Education. So the point I want to make is that we live in a drug apartheid. And we knew in apartheid that once you've identified a person's race, the rest is automatic. It determines where he can go or can't go, what you expect of him, and even if he's doing better, he's a miracle. And my point is, let's look at what we have as drug apartheid. Those of us who are not identified as drug users have access to normal life, normal services, normal employment, and an integrated comprehensive health service. But the reality is much more complex, integrated, and multimobility. I just want to show you one slide to say that our data of 200,000 households says that if there's substance use in the household, the issue of TB, this is TB symptoms, people who default, people who are not on treatment and on treatment, is six to seven times higher. Symptoms, um, defaulters, etc. So, what we propose, and oh my goodness, did I close it? All right. The, what we are working towards, and there's a big movement in healthcare now, and in Gauteng it is on a knife edge, is to say that health services should be integrated geographically and not defined by level of care or condition that you have. And this is what an integrated district health system is, is that in a certain area, everybody gets health care in the same system. So how do we get rid of, of drug apartheid? Funders has to repent and change from vertical funding to comprehensive funding. Um, and I know I may probably, I wonder if there's one person here who works in the normal health service. Can I just see? Paid by the Department of Health. Is there anybody here that's 
got his salary from the Department of Health. Okay, there's one. Yes, you work in head office. You're not a clinician, but at least you work in head office. The person at the back, are you a clinician? No longer a clinician. You are a manager. All right. So I am very sensitive to the fact that all of you who are here doing clinical services live of that first point of vertical programs. That's your livelihood. It's either Global Fund or it's PEPFAR. The problem is it is detrimental to a comprehensive healthcare service. And the people that struggle the most under it are the substance users. Because they get the little bit at the end. So we need to do advocacy into the health system. And I think that is what Urbi said. There may be resistance with the police and the politicians, fine. But my goodness, the resistance in the health system is immense. And there, we can at least talk about ethics and what is needed. And at least as clinicians, we have to say, my moral values cannot determine my ethics. And my ethics says two things. What do you know and what do you do? And this is what we propose to do advocacy into the health system. And I'm proposing to the NGOs who are here, Position yourself for the NHI. I think there's one more slide. The point here is, and we have now, as universities made, responded to a Department of Health tender on the NHI. And South Africans, you can know the NHI is coming. And the point is, we need to have substance use management as part of the comprehensive package of care that is delivered by the NHI. It must be in there. We are pushing now in Gauteng something we call sub-district care coordination, which is exactly that. You take a geographical area and you integrate the care through multidisciplinary teams. And in Chwane, the COSAP sites and the COSAP people are sitting in the multidisciplinary team presenting the substance use issues. Because remember, every household where there's substance use, there's TB, there's HIV, there's food insecurity, there's maternal health issues. So we can actually use substance use management as an integrative measure for healthcare. And in the national health insurance, it makes great financial sense to optimally care for people who use substances. It's a no-brainer to take substance use, manage it properly, and you will save dollars through early prevention, uh, through prevention early detection, and ongoing care. We are going for tea. We'll come back. We'll sit here, a big, a big uh, uh, team, including clinical associates and social workers, and we'll respond to the questions. We are going to start the Hope Line video while you go for tea. And it's fine if we play it ongoingly. Will you play it ongoingly until, until tea is finished? Thank you for that, and thanks for your uh, patience.